Welcome to Movie Shortens. Follow us today to a 2020 horror film called SOS, Survive or Sacrifice. Before we start, be aware, there are spoilers. This troubling story begins when two sisters named Kate and Liz get ready to go on vacation. Kate is the older sister and takes care of everything while Liz spends her time texting. In the next scene, we meet two more characters. We see a man named Jack on a lawn chair in a garden joined by his girlfriend Myra. The two flirt and Jack appears to be a wealthy man. In fact, he constantly promises luxury vacations to Myra. Returning to the sisters, they arrive at the hotel. But upon checking in, Liz realizes that she has forgotten her passport. Kate begins to lecture her while the receptionist presents some solutions. Finally, Kate asks if it's possible to have room service because they're starving. The receptionist says the kitchen is now closed and advises her to try the nightclub downstairs. After showering, Kate receives a call from a doctor inquiring about Liz's health situation. She replies that fortunately, she has been like a normal girl for a few months now. After leaving the bathroom, Kate talks to Liz, but finds her already asleep. Kate goes to the nightclub, and while ordering a drink, she is joined by Myra under Jack's supervision. Myra shows up and convinces her to dance with her. In the meantime, Jack orders champagne, but it all seems too suspicious. In fact, getting help from the arrival of two men named Andreas and Nick, Myra steals a key from Kate and secretly hands it to Jack. Among the group, a man says he has a hot air balloon and invites everyone for a ride. Being a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, despite initial hesitation, Kate accepts. They waste no time and drive off. The group arrives at their destination, but initially, the two girls seem frightened, not seeing the hot air balloon. Kate tells them that she has sent her location to her younger sister in case something happens. Andreas reassures them by showing them where it is and entrusts Nick with the task of tying the hot air balloon to the wheel of the car so that it does not move. Meanwhile, we see Jack at the hotel, posing like a waiter with champagne, making his way to the sister's room. The genius Nick ties the rope to the wheel, but forgets to tie it to the hot air balloon as well. Liz wakes up and chats with her friend Christy, talking about Kate and the fact that she has been partying all night. She plans to hide in a closet to scare her when she arrives. Meanwhile, Jack knocks on the door, gets no answer, and enters with the stolen key. Liz watches him from the closet and, frightened, texts her friend with whom she is chatting. As Jack checks the room, a notification comes to Liz's phone. He hears it, opens the closet, and finds the frightened girl running to lock herself in the bathroom. Back to the group, Kate looks down at the hot air balloon and notices that they are moving. An argument begins between Andreas and Nick. Myra notices that the hot air balloon is moving toward a wind turbine. They decide to get it up as high as possible to avoid a crash. At one point, Nick gets up to see the situation, but does not have time to observe that the basket breaks, and he is thrown out of it. Andreas loses consciousness after a piece of wood gets stuck in his thigh. The two women find nothing in the first aid kit, and Kate takes off her shirt to tighten it around her leg, thus bringing Andreas back to his senses who warns them to turn off the burners. At the hotel, we see Liz quickly fleeing the room and arriving at the front desk, asking to call the police. In the meantime, the group on the hot air balloon goes into a total panic when suddenly, Nick pops up in the clouds, clinging to the rope attached to the basket. Unfortunately, despite Myra's help, he cannot save himself and falls. Meanwhile, Jack leaves a message on Myra's answering machine, furious, reminding her that it's over for them if they get caught. A policeman finally arrives at the hotel and inquires about the incident. The receptionist is very doubtful about the veracity of the story told by Liz. Meanwhile, on the hot air balloon, the burners are discharged. Andreas cannot get up. Therefore, he explains to Myra the process of changing gas canisters. Nevertheless, their fate seems to be to fall into the water since the burners will not last much longer. As Kate thinks about her sister, they realize that there are people in a boat in the distance. They try to shout and call for help. But it is all in vain 
as those strangers interpret their signals for help as greetings. Andreas tries to expose himself from the broken side of the basket to ask for help, but ends up falling into the water. Kate and Myra waste too much time arguing about who should climb down with the rope to rescue him, and Andreas sinks into the water. In the process, the boat leaves, and then they remember the billboard attached to the basket. They try to grab it, but detach only the tops, which go even lower. In desperation, Myra gets Kate to hold her legs and tries to catch the billboard upside down. They risk a lot, but once they manage to grab it, a problem arises. How will they write anything on it? They empty a bag, find lipstick, and decide to write SOS. The newly found object lasts just long enough to write S. Not knowing how to do it, Kate writes OS in blood. All their efforts are in vain because by now, the boat is too far away and no one notices the billboard. Meanwhile, a woman named Sophia from the American consulate arrives at the hotel and invites Liz to go with her to child protection. Liz wants to stay there and wait for her sister, but she seems to have no choice. Meanwhile, Myra wraps the wound on Kate's hand with her shirt to dab it and stop the bleeding. The group tries to light the burners, but they are now almost empty. They would need a lighter, but it was in Nick's pocket, which is now gone. Kate tries the sun's reflection on a champagne bottle, but has no luck. Then Kate gets another idea. She takes a condom and a bottle of vodka. They open it and slowly pour the vodka into the condom. They try the newly created object on Myra's hand, and it works. But of course, it causes her pain, so they decide to try it on a dollar bill. The bill starts to burn, and they immediately insert it into the burner, which starts working again. Kate comes up with the idea of burning something to create smoke signals, and they start taking pieces of the hot air balloon to burn them. In the process, Myra talks about how she did not have the chance to go to college and have a better life, to become a strong woman like Kate. Then, they attach the hot air balloon pieces to a wooden pole and burn them, creating a smoke signal. Meanwhile, Liz is now in the car with Sophia. The young girl convinces Sophia to go to the location sent by Kate. Once they arrive, the situation seems to get worse. They find the company's phone number, which warns them that they are closed, and therefore, the balloon will be reported stolen. Looking for a solution, Myra has a brilliant idea. She detaches a wire from the hot air balloon to insert it into the phone so that it acts like an antenna. The signal arrives and Kate sends the location to her sister, but the phone goes completely dead, shutting down as soon as she sends it. The policeman who was at the hotel, pulling up in a squad car, sees the forensic team at the back and joins them. He presumes that a young girl has killed someone, but she pleads innocence. She justifies herself by telling her version of the events, but he doesn't believe her because she's full of blood. In the meantime, Liz gets the location sent by Kate. Somehow, she convinces Sophia to join her sister without waiting for the Coast Guard to intervene. Meanwhile, the two women decide to remove the balloon panels. They do this in a very risky way, climbing into a hot air balloon. Fortunately, they succeed. Sophia and the young girl arrive at her friend's boat Sophia orders Liz to stay in the car. Then, she climbs into the empty boat and calls her friend, but gets a negative response. After finishing the call, she sees Liz trying to sneak a dinghy into the water. Sophia joins her, and they set off. Meanwhile, the balloon basket floats on the water with the women clinging to it. Desperate, Myra confesses to Kate the attempted theft against her. In the process, Jack picks up some money hidden in a place, where... He then meets a woman with whom he kisses and gets into a car. Meanwhile, the life raft begins to leak air. Liz plugs the hole with Sophia's phone, which, of course, gets her angry. The balloon envelope is now in the water. Kate, not seeing Myra, realizes that she is stuck under it and rescues her. They swim to a balloon envelope floating in the water and cling to it. Liz and Sophia cannot get the dinghy going again, but Liz does not give up and finds two oars with which they can move. Returning to Jack, the woman who is in the hotel with him takes advantage of the fact that he is in the shower to move the money in her purse and escapes. Kate and Myra see a ship in the distance. They are optimistic and try to call for help, but soon after realize that those on the ship 
cannot see them. They are, therefore, in danger of being run over by the ship and clinging to the tank. They swim desperately to move. Liz is desperate. They have no landmarks and nowhere to go. She then uses a stadium trumpet to make noise, and initially, it seems to be useless. But at one point, she is dazzled by a reflection. It turns out that Myra reflects the sunlight with a small mirror. They finally arrive at the two missing women and help them into the dinghy. They are over the moon and hug each other, introducing their new best friends. The story seems to have a good ending, but Sophia wonders how they will get back. Like and subscribe for more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.